Okay, let's go ahead. I'm going to officially call this hearing to order. I'd ask everyone to please remember to silence your cell phones. I know that you were allowed to bring them in, but I don't want to hear any of them, please. Uh, this is the second in a series of seven public hearings of the Ad Hoc Committee to Review the Criminal Justice Act. My name is Kathleen Cardone. I'm a United States District Judge for the Western District of Texas, and I am chair of the committee. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce the other members of the committee that are here with me today. I'm going to start with those that are part of our first panel. Here to my left is Judge Mitchell Goldberg, a United States District Judge for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Neil McBride here to my right, an attorney with Davis Polk and Wardwell. Catherine Rowe here from the Federal Public Defender for the District of Minnesota, and Dr. Robert Rucker, who is an Assistant Circuit Executive, Circuit Executive for the Ninth Circuit. Also present from the committee are members who will be participating throughout these two days of the hearings. They include Judge Edward Prado, Chair Emeritus of the committee, and a judge on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals, Judge Reggie Walton, United States District Judge in, the, in Washington, D.C., Judge Dale Fisher, United States District Judge from the Central District of California. Mr. Ruben Kahn, Executive Director, Federal Defenders of San Diego. And please note he'll be acting as chair for our hearing tomorrow. Professor Oren Carr, the George Washington University. Mr. Chip Friendsley, National CJA Panel Attorney District Representative. And Professor John Gold, way over there to my left. He is our reporter and he is from American University. Not with us today, but always with us in spirit, is Judge John Girard. He is a United States District Judge from Nebraska. Let me also introduce the staff of the committee, who will include Ms. Erin Brenner over here to my left, Ms. Autumn Dickman, and Mr. Mark Gable. I don't know if he is here in the courtroom. The committee is pleased to be conducting this meeting in Miami. In planning our hearings throughout the country, it was our desire to have the opportunity to hear from all of our diverse judicial districts by setting up regional locations that would allow us to address all matters before this committee. In particular, at this second hearing, the committee wishes to have a focus on issues in multi-defendant cases, issues surrounding e-discovery and extraterritorial discovery, and issues surrounding the use of experts in criminal cases. Now, just a brief history of the Criminal Justice, Justice Act. The Sixth Amendment guarantees to the accused the right to counsel in serious criminal prosecutions. To ensure that representation, it is now well established that after assessing the financial condition of the accused, the government may bear some or all of the cost of the representation of that person. The responsibility for appointing counsel in federal criminal proceedings for those unable to bear the cost has historically rested with the federal judiciary. In 1964, the Criminal Justice Act, or what we call the CJA, was enacted. It established a comprehensive system for appointing and compensating lawyers to represent defendants financially unable to retain counsel in federal proceedings. It also authorized reimbursement of reasonable out-of-pocket expenses and payment of expert and investigative services necessary for an adequate defense. Amendments to the CJA in 1970 authorized districts to establish federal defender organizations as counterparts to federal prosecutors in those districts where at least 200 persons annually require appointment of counsel. It is now more than 50 years since the CJA was enacted. There are approximately 81 authorized federal defender organizations who employ lawyers, investigators, paralegals, and support personnel. They serve over 90 of the 94 judicial districts. Those federal defender organizations, in combination with more than 10,000 private panel attorneys, represent the vast majority of individuals who are prosecuted in our federal courts. In April of 2015, I and my fellow committee members had the distinct privilege of being appointed by John Roberts, Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, to serve on this ad hoc committee to review the Criminal Justice Act. In doing so, Chief Justice Roberts listed 14 specific issues for us to review. They include areas of judicial involvement in the CJA process, employment and compensation under the CJA, quality of representation under the CJA, and the CJA structure and effectiveness. This is not the first of a kind study. 
Judicial Conference policy has long supported a periodic, comprehensive, and impartial review of the CJA program. In 1967, the Judicial Conference and the Department of Justice gave Professor Dallin Oaks the sole respons uh, responsibility of performing such an analysis. Then, in 1993, a report authored by the Committee to Review the Criminal Justice Act, which was chaired by our Chair Emeritus, Judge Edward Prado, was presented to the Judicial Conference. It was a 212-page report, and it described the historical evolution of appointed counsel in the federal courts, as well as presenting detailed findings. It made 28 specific recommendations to improve the CJA program to include selection, training, evaluation, and compensation of panel attorneys, the establishment and management of federal defender organizations, CJA funding, and improvements to the administrative structure. Many of the Prado Review Committee's proposals were endorsed by the Judicial Conference. It has now been over 20 years since that report. This committee is very thankful for all of the work that it was done before us, before our report by our predecessors. And in particular, we want to recognize Judge Prado, his previous effort, and the efforts of his entire committee has been invaluable uh, in helping us frame the work of our committee. I want to address for all of you a little bit about how this study will proceed. The study is expected to be completed in the spring of 2017 when it will be presented to the judi Judicial Conference of the United States Courts. Between now and then, this committee, with all of its collective experience and the, the views of all of its members, intends to gather information, examine the CJA program, debate the issues, and, after thoughtful consideration, make its recommendations to policymakers. These findings and recommendations will be documented and explained in a written report. And as I said, this report will be prepared by none other than our reporter, Professor John Gould. It is the committee's hope that in today's world of computers, email, and websites, we are able to sufficiently reach out to the stakeholders and give them the opportunity to provide us with ample information to document our study. For those of you who are not aware, the CJA Committee has set up a website at cjastudy.fd.org, which allows anyone to inform themselves about the study and submit comment. The committee will be conducting a series of seven public hearings. This series of seven public hearings is in, is in an effort by the committee to hear from a broad spectrum of individuals and organizations and to engage them in discussion of the issues. <coughs> The seven public hearings have been scheduled as follows. Our first completed hearing was at November 16th and 17th, 2015 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The current meeting today, January 11th and tomorrow the 12th, being held here in Miami, Florida. February 3rd and 4th, 2016 in Portland, Oregon. February 18th and 19th, 2016 in Birmingham, Alabama. March 2nd and 3rd, 2016 in San Francisco, California. April 11th and 12th, 2016 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And finally, May 16th and 17th, 2016 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are hopeful that the criminal justice community will come forward to present their views. All of these hearings will be transcribed for public record. The video and transcripts from our first hearing in Santa Fe are currently posted on our website. Today's hearing is also being broadcast live through our CJA study website. Once again, that is cjstudy.fd.org. Before we get started, I'd like to explain a little bit about today's format. Each participating panel member will be given the opportunity to make a brief opening statement. We'd ask you please not to read from your written submissions as we've already had the chance to review them by the committee. They will be posted as public information at the conclusion of this hearing. After each panel participant has had the opportunity to make an opening statement, questioning by the panel will begin. Shortly before the end of this panel's time, I'm going to stop the questioning by this current panel and I'm going to allow all of the committee members to any, ask any follow-up questions that they may have. 